um, Kate Yard. Uh, Kate is a wildlife biologist in the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation's Wildlife Diversity Section, and she will be discussing the state of New York's efforts to restore young forests. So Kate, thanks very much. Yes, thanks, John. All right, so good morning, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity to speak with you today about uh, what we're doing with forest management on uh, WMAs across New York State. And so just to start, um, I thought I'd give a little bit of background on what the WMA system is. And so this is public lands across New York State that are uh, administered by DEC's Bureau of Wildlife. We have over 120 WMAs across the state, making up over 235,000 acres of land. And so one important um, thing to note here is that WMAs are different from other types of public land in New York in that they're managed specifically for uh, two main goals related to wildlife. So wildlife and habitat conservation, as well as wildlife related recreation, which is things like hunting, fishing, trapping, and bird watching. And so when we think about forest management on our wildlife management areas, it all comes back to the overarching goal of wildlife and wildlife habitat. So I wanted to start by sharing that that's our perspective on WMAs. And so when we think about forest management, we share the same challenges of forests across New York and throughout the Northeast, where we're dealing with issues on forest regeneration and overabundant deer, invasive plants, forest pests. We have a lot going on on our forest. Um, but the one that we've chosen to prioritize currently on our WMAs is really the issue of uh, not enough young forest on our landscape. So we have a lot of mature forest. And that's kind of illustrated here by this graphic of forest inventory inventory analysis data from New York, where you can see most of our forest is mature, so in that 40 to 100 year block, and we have a sort of undesirably less, lower amount of young forest, which is that zero to 20 year old age class. And so this is really one of the key issues that we've decided to focus on for the time being on WMAs in New York. And if we think about that uh, challenge from the wildlife perspective, this is a nice depressing slide showing a lot of declining population trends for some of our uh, species of greatest conservation need in New York. And I pulled out the ones that um, rely on young forest for nesting or during, during the post-fledging period. And really, we saw that we had both a need and an opportunity to manage our forest to do something for these and other uh, species of wildlife. And so our current conditions on WMAs, um, this is looking across our WMA landscape, pooling all of the acreage in the WMA system. And we currently have a lot of forests. About 60% of our land is forested. About 30% is wetlands and aquatic habitats. The remaining 10% is early successional habitats like grasslands and agricultural lands. And so in 2015, um, we started looking at how much young forest do we have in this area. And sort of our current inventory at the time told us we had somewhere between three and 4% young forest on our landscape. And so we uh, actually created a young forest initiative for our WMAs in New York. And the goal of that program is to really increase the amount of young forest to about 10% of our forested acres. So more than doubling the amount on our WMA landscape. And that comes out to be somewhere between uh, 10,000 and 12,000 acres of young forest we hope to manage over the next 10 years or so. And so this is just a quick shot of the habitat type that I'm talking about. So lots of uh, regeneration in the understory. We have that canopy gap allowing in a lot of sunlight. And what that does is allows for the development of vegetation structure that's really important for wildlife, both for um, providing cover as well as abundant food resources. So that's what we're really shooting for across our WMAs. Our program does have eight target species, three of which are mammals that I will ignore for the purposes of today's session, but we are focusing in on creating habitat for woodcock, grouse, turkey, as well as golden wing warbler and whippoorwill, which are two of our SGCN in New York State. And what this means is when we're making habitat, we will focus in on best management practices for these species when we're developing our silvicultural prescriptions. And so this is just a look at where those WMAs are across the state. The areas in green are where we'll be implementing the program. 
And our implementation starts with a combination of forest inventory as well as management planning. And this is just one example showing Capital District WMA. And all of the different colored polygons in green are areas we've uh, cover typed as forest. The areas in blue are wetlands. And then our management planning is overlaid in the crosshatch polygons on top of that, where we'll be creating different types of forest management uh, treatments. And so those areas just show when we're going to treat them and what method we'll use. And so to improve um, habitat for some of our target species and other species in New York, we're using a variety of forest management methods, including um, even age management, such as clear cuts, sea tree cuts, and shelter wood cuts, as well as non-commercial options. So using much smaller scale uh, canopy gaps to create a better developed understory. We're using a small amount of prescribed fire in forest communities where it's appropriate, like a pitch pine scrub oak community. And we're also trying to accelerate uh, our establishment of vegetation and also favor native species by planting tree and uh, shrub seedlings. And so today, uh, kind of where we are with the program, we've completed 80% of our inventory. And we've completed 41 habitat management plans and have another 30 that are in uh, prep right now. And just to give a glimpse of across the state uh, what that looks like, so this is just very broadly what counties are we working in. So we have over 600 acres of young forest that we've put on the ground uh, so far. And the areas in blue, lighter shades of blue here, are lesser amounts, so less than 25 acres of our projects. And the areas in darker blue, we have upwards of 100 acres of young forest that we've created. And moving forward, we currently have uh, 2,500 acres of projects where we are currently working. And about 800 acres of that is under contract right now. And um, every year, we're adding more project areas to this to really just um, keep working towards that 10% goal. And so that's just a little bit of a, a background on the program. And so looking more in towards the bird angle of this, so our monitoring objectives for all of these areas, um, both for the wildlife use as well as the vegetation, is to first document um, our baseline conditions and to avoid impacts to sensitive species or natural communities and also to assess wildlife and vegetation response to our management. And so I thought I would just quickly share um, a few of our bird-related monitoring efforts. So woodcock is one of our target species. It's SGCN in New York that relies on young forest. And so we are using a singing ground survey approach to survey for woodcock. We've adapted it to walk into a project areas or use driving routes if our, we have multiple project areas on a single wildlife management area. So we do these once a year following standard protocol and we'll be doing woodcock surveys on the majority of, uh, of areas in our program. Our monitoring for, monitoring for grouse is pretty similar. They're another SGCN in New York that we want to keep tabs on, so we do that using a drumming survey protocol. And at the same time, we're out there counting turkey because they're calling on the landscape at similar times of year. And again, like, uh, like woodcock, this is a well-distributed species across New York, so most of our WMAs will be monitoring uh, to see how our grouse responding to our forest treatments. Golden Wing Warbler is a high priority SGCN in New York. And they occur, um, we have both the Great Lakes uh, population as well as the Appalachian population of Golden Wings that kind of intersect in New York. So unfortunately, our wildlife management areas don't overlap really nicely uh, with the centers of our Golden Wing populations. But we do have four WMAs in our Golden Wing focus areas where we're going to use the Cornell Lab of Ornithology's um, survey protocol that combines a passive listening period with a call broadcast period to increase detection probability of this species. And at the same time, we're also counting other early successional birds. Um, so things like uh, towhees, field sparrows, um, and blue wing warbler, um, most notably. So we'll be going out and conducting golden wing surveys in our project areas that overlap with the golden wing populations in the state. Eastern Whippoorwill is kind of a similar story. It's a high priority SGCN in New York. And um, like Golden Wings, they're not distributed across the entire state. So we have 13 of our WMAs that are within Whippoorwill focus areas. And so on those areas, we'll be conducting sort of a modified version of the Northeast Nightjar survey protocol 
where again, rather than driving routes, we're actually adapting it to walk into our project areas, which is super fun to do in the dark when you can't see over all of that nice coarse woody debris you've left um, on the ground. So this is a little bit challenging, um, but we are surveying for, for whippoorwills to see how they're responding to our treatments. We're also um, conducting avian point counts, just sort of a more um, broad-based look at what the bird communities are on our wildlife management areas. And so we're focusing in on uh, quite a few SGCN that we're hoping to um, both detect on our wildlife management areas. In some cases, we may not know exactly what the bird community is on a particular WMA, if it hasn't been surveyed recently, or if it's a new property that we've acquired and haven't inventoried yet. So we are looking for those SGCN, as well as just documenting what birds are using the area and how does that bird community shift pre and post management. So we do this using standard avian point counts, 10 minute counts, two replicates per year. And we're conducting these on most WMAs in our program. So far we've surveyed 24 of the properties. And so the last um, piece of bird monitoring that we're doing as part of our forest management uh, is really aimed at avoiding impacts uh, to sensitive species. And so we have two SGCN woodland nesting raptors, so northern goshawk and red-shouldered hawk, that we want to make sure our forest management activities aren't uh, adversely impacting those species. So we do a variety of um, survey methods for these, for these species. Um, including a call broadcast survey early in the nesting season, so late winter, early spring, to detect territorial adults. We also do area searches throughout the, um, throughout the breeding season, looking for nests or signs of nesting activity. And when we do find one, we actually buffer that area so that our forest um, management activities aren't impacting those species. And we have surveyed uh, 13 of our WMAs to date um, to get a handle on where are our woodland nesting raptors. And so um, to kind of wrap things up a, a little bit, I wanted to pull it all together with an example of one of our project areas. So this is Mongop Valley WMA uh, in Sullivan County, which is down on the New Jersey-Pennsylvania border. And so at Mongop, we had really a nice block of contiguous mature forest, not a lot of structural diversity there, not a lot of diversity in terms of uh, forest age classes. And so our biologists and foresters working on this area uh, developed a plan that was targeting um, both whippoorwill uh, and rough grouse, as well as trying to uh, regenerate uh, an oak component of this forest. So there were sort of those three objectives for this project. So in 2015 and 16, uh, they completed a 40 acre seed tree cut uh, treatment. And unfortunately, this was one of our earlier projects that was very linear in shape and we're trying to work on that and make things that look slightly more natural across the landscape. Um, but you can see here a number of leaf trees. Those were our seed trees. And this is what it looked like immediately after treatment. So we got that classic even age management moonscape, um, which is not very attractive, but we did leave a fair amount of coarse woody debris on this particular site. And this is after two growing seasons. So this is uh, taken in the summer of 2018. And you can see we're starting to get some nice uh, green up on the landscape, both through stump sprouting and regeneration. And um, we conducted surveys for our target species, so grouse and whippoorwill, as well as avian point counts on this property. And just within um, the two years since treatment, uh, we detected a number of early successional songbirds on the area, including towhees, prairie warblers, field sparrows, and some other species. During our grouse surveys, we did not detect our rough grouse because really at this point, the habitat structure hasn't developed enough for that species, but we did detect turkey um, during those uh, surveys, so that was a positive sign. And during our whippoorwill surveys, we did detect two whippoorwills using the area, which was actually an unexpected finding for this um, particular project area because they weren't uh, known to be in the area uh, pre-survey, I'm sorry, pre-treatment. And so it was really nice to see whippoorwill <coughs> using the area. However, we went back in in 2018 and detected no whippoorwills using the area. So we have a lot more um, monitoring to do to figure out what's going on at Mongop with whippoorwills. But this is just one example of what we hope to replicate in terms of vegetation. Uh, regeneration from these project areas, as well as the wildlife response. 
And so I just wanted to close um, by acknowledging and thanking the many people and partners that are working on this program. So just in New York State on WMAs, we have a team of 20 uh, foresters and biologists that were hired to implement this program. And we are also working in collaboration with a number of partners in New York, including Audubon New York, Rough Grouse Society, Wild Turkey Federation, and others, all uh, contributing to the broader Young Forest Project, which is a regional project across the Northeast and Midwest that you may be aware of. So the work that we're doing on WMAs is really um, trying to contribute to the public lands um, component of that project, where some of our partners are working more focused on private lands. So I just wanted to say thank you and express appreciation to the many people it takes to restore young forests in New York. And so with that, um, my contact information, as well as a couple um, websites if you're interested in learning more, either about the larger Young Forest Project, which is youngforest.org, or um, DEC's Young Forest Initiative, which is the second uh, web address down there. And if there's any uh, questions at this time, I'd be happy to take them. So Jim's never going to let me do this again if I don't. Um, move us on. It was a technical problem, by the way. Okay. So um, thank you, Kate, very much. And Kate will be around all day, so we'll have a chance. I know I have a lot of questions I'd like to ask you, so uh, please find Kate. Um, but